your market update for August 15, 2022. So we're going to talk about inventory. It's continuing to decline and nobody is talking about it. We also got the numbers back from last week in regards to the consumer price index as well as the producer's price influx. Some really great news right there. We're going to go over what's going on in the mortgage market, which ties into those CPI and PPI numbers. Uh, we're going to talk about U.S. Home Builder how the sentiment is way down. They're, caught, they're saying it's a housing recession for the builders currently. And we're also going to talk about what's going on with home prices. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. Let's jump straight into the Massachusetts data. For single-family homes, we have 5,297 single-family homes currently on the market. Now, this is down 62 units from last week, or about 1%. We saw 1,073 newly listed homes come on the market, and this is compared to 1,378 that we saw the same week last year. So that's an astounding 22% decrease in the amount of new homes coming on the market. We saw 1,145 single-family homes actually go under agreement. Now, this was 48 units shy of last week's number, but 242 units shy of this week last year's number, or a 17% percent decrease in the amount of houses going under agreement so we had a 17 percent decrease in the amount of buyer demand if you will but yet a 22 percent decrease in the amount of new listings coming on the market we had 889 single family homes sell last week for an average sale price of $792,000 and a median sales price of $608,000. In our months of inventory, this is how we signal what type of market is, is, is are we in? Is it a strong seller's market? Is it a strong buyer's market? This week, in, uh, months of inventory actually decreased out of 1.33 from 1.35 months. We're continuing to see it become a stronger and stronger seller's market, which if if you're looking at any national news, it's pretty much not what you're seeing, right? In Massachusetts, we're a lot different than the Southeast markets or Florida markets or Atlanta or Charlotte, which we're going to talk about momentarily. But if you're a buyer and you were in the market just 28 days ago, right, one month ago, then you actually have 4% less the amount of houses to look at today than you did just that one week. So, so yes, just like I, I pointed out in the new listings as well as the properties going under agreement, right, 22% down for new listings and only 17% decrease in the amount of buyer demand or properties going under agreement. So let's take a look at the condo market. In the condo market, we have 2,542 properties currently on the market. Now, this is down 101 units from the same time last week, uh, which is about a 4% decrease week over week. We had 365 newly listed condos come on the market. Now, this was a huge decrease when we look at last week's number when, when we had 444 condos come on the market, but an even larger decrease when we compare it to just one year ago when we had 553 condos come on the market. So when we look at it a year over year comparison, we had a 34% decrease in the amount of sellers coming on the market, which is a pretty astounding number. Now, 422 condos, they went under agreement last week. This is great. But this is compared to 573 condos that went under agreement, same period, just last year. So I love the 5.7% increase week over week, but it's still a 26% decrease when we compare it to the same time just last year. Now there were 337 condos that sold for an average sale price of $652,000, while that median sales price was $510,000. And then that months of inventory, again, how we figure out how strong of a buyer's or seller's market it is, the months of inventory is 1.51 months, and this slipped from the 1.54 months that we saw just last week. And by the way, if you're liking this data, then I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe and the like button, maybe possibly sharing, and just getting it out there to other folks who are thinking about buying or selling. So let's quickly talk about the mortgage market. Last week, rates, they trended down a bit. This is really great news, right? They're continuing to go, in, if you will, in the right direction. And this is ultimately because the inflation numbers that we saw in the CPI as well as the PPI, which again, we're going to talk about momentarily and what exactly that means for you. And the, right now, they're, they're hovering in the low fives, right? We're five and a quarter, kind of in that range. Remember that rates are dependent on your credit score, how much you're putting down and what program that you're going to be in. But right now, rates are going, they're stable, right? They're, it's a stable mortgage market. 
market, which is exactly what we needed because we had a lot of volatility back in June. So we're really seeing stability in the month of July and so far halfway through the month of August in the mortgage market, which us as real estate professionals as well as mortgage professionals, we love. I will say, however, we're, we're really starting to see more and more quote unquote experts really recommending home buyers move to that arm product, the adjustable rate mortgage product, maybe locking into a 7-1 or 10-1 arm where they can actually get their rates well into the fours. And I actually did a video on this above. You can click it right here. That really goes in and talks about what are the advantages of using an arm and what are the uh, disadvantages of using the arm. But the reason why they're recommending this or suggesting it or possibly saying, hey, this might be a great option for you is that they see the U.S economy going into recession they see the fed needing to decrease rates which ultimately means if you're in an arm you're going to have uh more favorable interest rates in the future that's why they're recommending it there is more risk to that play you got to keep that in mind so let's jump to those economic numbers now the consumer price index it stayed unchanged when we look at a month over month which is really 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 great news this is what we're all cheering for we all wanted this is just fantastic news for our economy that inflation isn't growing anymore but we still have an eight and a half percent inflation rate which is still really high okay but really what it's saying is is is, is the ship might have stopped and again I, I use the term might have because we really do need more data now the producer price index actually went down a half percent so this is really great news why because the producers well they produce and then us consumers buy so hopefully this is news for us consumers coming up now the biggest reason why these prices uh the cpi as well as the ppi didn't necessarily increase is because energy prices have gone down significantly in the last month which has been a great 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 news for all of us it's been like a raise quite frankly for how much i drive and, and this is just fantastic news for us as consumers now while the energy prices decrease the problem is, is still other things are increasing as a great example of other things prices increasing food food continues to increase um, by pretty astounding bounce but all that being said what does this mean well ultimately granted this is only one set of data points we need more months to figure it out but to the fed the question becomes has the ship stopped is it starting to turn are we going to actually starting to see inflation decrease right where rather than eight and a half percent year over year you know going down to eight to five four the goal benchmark is two percent you got to keep that in mind that is how much higher above we are right now than where the fed really wants us to be so there's still a lot of work to be done but what this might mean mean is that the fed might might not be have to be as aggressive as they were thinking that they needed to be in order to slow down the economy and thereby slow down inflation u.s builder sentiment because this matters a lot builder sentiment they're now saying they're in a housing recession right there it's the eighth consecutive month where builder sentiment has actually decreased and what this really means is well it's a great thing it ultimately means that builders are going to try to offload a lot of their shadow inventory properties that they currently have on the market right or they're currently building out it also probably means that they're either going to slow down or stop future building starts and all of this is really great news because there is talk as the economy slows it kind of makes sense right when we see the economy slow we naturally see foreclosures start to increase so if builder new supply starts decreasing right as you know might, we might start seeing some foreclosures start to increase nothing like 2008 there's no way it's going to be anything like 2008 so just go ahead and take that out of your mind it's not going to be anything like 2008 i will talk about that in future videos and in, in, in that sense of why it's not but just take that out of your mindset it's not going to be anything like 2008 but we are going to start to see foreclosures start to increase right but if if the builder you know supply is decreasing while the foreclosure supply is increasing well the two might average out right so this is really 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 good news for us as a market where we are starting to see a slowdown in a lot of places throughout the country where we are starting to see inventory skyrocket in a lot of parts of the country not here in massachusetts but in other parts of the country and you got to keep that in mind right real estate is local it's not a national real estate market just like we can't say the temperature in the u.s yesterday was 78 degrees right that would make absolutely zero sense and it's the same exact thing when we talk about 
real estate and real estate markets and what's going on. Real estate is local. Throw out those national headlines because they do not matter. So what's going on with prices? This is a question I literally get all of the time. Are prices going to go down? Again, like I just said, real estate, it's local. In many parts of the country, I truly believe without a doubt that real estate prices are going to be going down. For example, I would not be buying a house in Boise, Idaho right now, right? Many areas of the Southwest, you have Florida, areas that saw really, really, really huge gains. I mean, we're talking 20, 30, 40% appreciation gains in the last couple of years, they have room to come down, right? There, uh, in a lot of these markets, you had a lot of institutional buyers buying properties where ultimately they just disappeared from the market overnight, right? Those markets are seeing a huge, huge, huge drastic increase in the amount of supply of properties coming on the market. Those markets like Boise, Idaho, San Jose, California, Austin, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina, right? Those markets probably have quite a bit to give. But in Boston, in, in the Massachusetts market, we're not seeing that, right? Inventory continues to be strained in Massachusetts. Like I said, we have 1.31 months worth of inventory on the market in the whole entire state of Massachusetts. It is a very strong seller's market. And we were starting to see inventory really start going up. And then all of a sudden, in the last four weeks, we've actually seen inventory declines, which nobody is talking about anywhere nationally right that is our market in the state of massachusetts right now is inventory going to continue to go up i do believe in the long term in the fall market i believe inventory is going to go up but when you look at our inventory levels today and you compare it to the same time last week yes inventory is up 18 percent. that's not a huge number we're seeing in in inventory in like boise Idaho, right 100 130, 140, 150% year over your inventory gains. And those are the markets that are going to see some pricing corrections. That is not the Massachusetts market as it currently sits today. And the biggest, biggest news, the biggest thing that you can really see in our market specifically, which we have seen in all the data that I actually just went over with you, is that yes, Buyer demand has decreased, but seller demand, seller supply, I should say, has actually decreased even more, which is just absolutely astounding. Now, I, I decided that I'm going to do a video. Is the real estate market in Massachusetts going to crash, right? Again, this is a question I get all the time. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pour through the data. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do a really awesome video for all of you. So be on the lookout for that. If that's something that you would be probably be interested in, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button. So that way, in the next couple of weeks, when I, when I put this video together and I release it, right, you're one of the first to know. Because that is the biggest question, right? What is the Massachusetts economy ultimately like? How is it going to fare better in this recession, right? And yes, don't get me wrong, it's all a little bit of guessing, but that is literally what all the experts are doing. But they're talking about a national guess. I'm going to take it to a Massachusetts-specific data points. If you have any questions about the market data or any comments about this video or the market, I would really love to know. Be sure to drop those in the comments section. I always love hearing folks. I love hearing about different things I can do. For the example, the other day, somebody was like, hey, what about multifamily data? Oh, so I put it in the video last week, and I'm going to do that once once every single month. So I, I love hearing the suggestions. Please keep them coming. If you want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you're buying or selling in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, you know, kind of looking for a dog not in the fight. Hey, I love talking real estate. I would love to chat with you. All my information is in that description below, so that's where you can find me. And by the way, if you could do me a favor, if you like this video, if you like the information in this video, if you could hit that like button, if you could hit that subscribe subscribe button and if you could share it with friends and family so that way they know what's going on with most likely their biggest and most important asset then I would truly appreciate it so until next week